PlayStation Plus is a requirement if you want to play online on PlayStation and it also gives you other stuff like cloud saves and quote unquote free games that you can play as long as you remain a subscriber. But how good were those games in 2020? Today we're going to go through each month listing all the games we had on the service during the year, its average score and retail price at the time it was included, and finally put it all together to see what the total average score and max total value was. My name is Joseph, this is High for Games, and welcome to my PlayStation Plus review for 2020. Let's start all the way back in January, we still didn't know quite the adventure that 2020 was going to be, and speaking of adventures, we got Uncharted The Nathan Drake Collection, the compilation of all three amazing games from the PS3 era remastered for PS4, and Goat Simulator, the game that has you creating as much destruction as you can while you are a goat. Looking at the Metacritic and retail price for each game, Uncharted Collection has an 86 with a 1999 price, while Goat Simulator has a 58 and costs 999. This gives us a total value for the month of 29 with 98, which was the month with the least amount of value in the year, and a 72 average score, the third least favorable in 2020. In February, PlayStation was ready to get back into the realm of create, play, and share with Dreams. And on PlayStation Plus, we were going to travel around the city forged from the dreams of Andrew Ryan in the Bioshock Collection. Another set of three amazing games from, well, two generations ago at this point. It has a Metacritic of 84 and a price tag of 59 with 99. You'd also get the chance to live in another world because we were going to need it with The Sims 4. The game has a 66 on Metacritic and a retail price of 39 with 99. Finally, we got a third game as a bonus, one of the best PlayStation VR games that has you being a contractor taking on anonymous missions in Firewall Zero Hour. This one has a 79 score and a 1999 price. Putting all this together and it was the month with the most retail value in 2020 with 119 with 97, while Metacritic average for this game sits at a 76. March arrived and Sony was revealing specs for PS5, E3 was cancelled and Sonic the Hedgehog movie premiered in February, PlayStation Plus wanted to go fast to celebrate but it stumbled us into Sonic Forces, which was the lowest ranked game of the whole year with a 57 and a price tag of 19 with 99. But at least we had a journey to make and slay Gigantic Beast with Shadow of the Colossus, the remake from Bluepoint Games, making its way into Plus with a 91 score and 1999 retail value. The average score for this month sits then at a 74 and the total retail value at 39 with 98. Moving into April, DualSense controller was being revealed. We were reviving the late 90s with the Resident Evil 3 and Final Fantasy 7 remakes, while The Last of Us Part 2 got delayed until June. Then on PlayStation Plus we'd have another Naughty Dog game and the last in Nathan Drake's story, for now with Uncharted 4, the highest score game in the collection for 2020 with a 93, and since it's a greatest hit at this point, it retailed for 19 with 99. You would also be able to race across important locations around the world with Dirt Rally 2.0. Man, with how 2020 was at this point, it was better to travel on your couch for sure. The game had an 84 on Metacritic and a 39.99 value. All this gives us a total value of 59 with 98 and an average score of 89, the highest ranked month for the year. May gave us a replacement for E3 with the Summer Game Fest, PlayStation Studios was officially the banner for Worldwide Studios moving forward, including a sassy new logo, and then on PlayStation Plus they would give us double the quote-unquote fun on simulation games for what was a very criticized month and my personal least favorite of the year. First we had Cities Skylines, the game has an 81 score and it's priced at 39 with 99, while on the other side there was Farming Simulator 19 with a 64 score and a 39.99 price as well. The score average for May was 73 and the total value was 79 with 98. Maybe they thought that we would be too busy watching Summer Game Fest or who knows, two simulation games seriously? What were they thinking? Hey, if you had fun with this, I'm happy for you. June arrived, everyone would be excited after the PS5 digital event, The Last of Us Part 2 was getting close to release as well, 
and on PlayStation Plus you will get the chance to wage war at either Earth or Space with Call of Duty World War II being included in the service. The game has a 79 Metacritic and a 59.99 price. Then we also had Star Wars Battlefront 2 with a 73 score and a 19.99 retail price. I had a lot of fun playing the story on this one, didn't get that much into multiplayer though. Rounding up the month, we had a 76 score average and a total value of 79 with 98. Second half of the year starting with game releases like Iron Man VR, which was delayed at the beginning of the year, and Ghost of Tsushima released as well in July. For PlayStation Plus, it was its 10th anniversary. The service was announced at E3 on June 15, 2010, with first availability a couple weeks later on June 29. The monthly instant game collection would follow in June 2012, and I was at that E3 when they announced that. It was my very first E3 as a matter of fact. The service would see another set of 3 games for the year, first up, some sports with NBA 2K20 with a meta score of 79 and a retail price of 59 with 99 some adventure with Rise of the Tomb Raider 20 year celebration, having a score of 88 and a tag of 29 with 99 and finally the third game was Erika, an interactive live action thriller that was scored 69 and was priced at 999. All this would make July the second best month in terms of retail value with 99 with 97 and the third best month in terms of score average at 78. August also saw Gamescom happening in online form due to the pandemic and PlayStation Touch wires on PC releasing Horizon Zero Dawn. Meanwhile, on PlayStation Plus we had my favorite month with massive online chaos in the form of Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout, a game that would go on to become a whole event of its own on live streaming services, it had a Metacritic of 81 and a price tag of 19 with 99. On the other side there would be one of the best Call of Duty campaigns yet with Modern Warfare 2 campaign remastered having a score of 71 and a 19.99 retail price. The score average for this month would sit at 76 with a total value of 39 with 98. Then in September we'd finally learn the final piece of the puzzle with the PS5 pricing. Meanwhile, PlayStation Plus was all chicken dinners and fist fights with player unknowns battlegrounds joining. The game has a 72 score with a 29.99 retail value. On the other side there was Street Fighter V, scored at 77 with a price tag of 19 with 99. Rounding up this month gives us a 75 score average and 49 with 98 for total retail value. October arrived, everyone was counting down the days for PS5, Soccer Punch added multiplayer to Ghost of Tsushima out of nowhere, however, PlayStation Plus was not going to have a good month in terms of average score. We had Need for Speed Payback sitting at a 61 in Metacritic with a 1999 price, and the Vampire Adventure game from Dognot in Vampire, which was priced at 39 with 99 and a score of 70. All this would end up in the least favorable month in terms of a score for PlayStation Plus in 2020, with an average of 66 and a total value sitting at 59 with 98. It was finally here, November brought the launch of the PlayStation 5, and as such PlayStation Plus would start including PS5 games into the monthly rollout, as well as the PlayStation Plus collection, which we'll also cover in a few, but let's get into the monthly games first. On PS4 we'll get Miller Shadow of War, the follow-up to Shadow of Mordor which didn't fare as well on release, the game had an 80 on Metacritic with a price tag of 49 with 99 next some classic side-scrolling action with Hollow Knight, Void Heart Edition, having a score of 85 with a price of 14.99. Also worth mentioning that since the PS5 is backwards compatible, these games would work perfectly fine on the system. Finally, the first PS5 game would be none other than the game that took the world by storm in June and had everyone talking about bug snacks. The island bug hunting adventure scored at 75 and was priced at 24 with 99. Also worth mentioning that this was only the PS5 version, but in case you bought it instead, it included also the one for PS4. This was a great month and we still haven't touched on the PlayStation Plus collection. For these three games, the average was an 80 with a total value of 89 with 97. 
being the second best mod in terms of score average and the third best in terms of retail value. Before moving on, let's make a stop on the PlayStation Plus collection as promised. So this collection was introduced back in September when they announced the PS5 pricing and final release details. It was a list that added 20 games in a not quite exactly but very similar way to how Game Pass works on Xbox. The list included Batman Arkham Knight, Battlefield 1, Bloodborne, Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Zombies Chronicles Edition, Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, Detroit Become Human, Days Gone, Fallout 4, Final Fantasy XV Royal Edition, God of War, Infamous Second Son, The Last Guardian, The Last of Us Remastered, Monster Hunter World, Mortal Kombat X, Persona 5, Ratchet and Clank, Resident Evil 7 Biohazard, Uncharted 4 A Thief's End, and Until Dawn. These games that define the PS4 generation can only be redeemed on a PS5, and in terms of a score, the most favorable here is God of War with a 94, while the least one is Days Gone with 71. And regarding pricing, the most valuable is Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Zombies Chronicles Edition, still priced at 59 with 99. It's been more than 3 years now, Activision. The whole collection added a total retail value of 504 with 80 and a quite high average score at 85. And we're back in present day, and oh boy, we were not ready for how cyberpunk we were going to be in December. PlayStation Plus didn't help overcome that either, with a list of games that would be 2020's second least favorable in terms of score average. First we had Just Cause 4 with all its grappling hooks and stunts, but only a 65 in meta score and a 29.99 value. Next was EA's Rocket Arena, the hero rumble kind of game, sitting at a 68 with 4.99 price tag. And finally, more warfare with Worms Rumble for both PS4 and PS5, having a score of 68 and valued at 14 with 99. Last month of the year added 49 with 97 in terms of value, but the average score was just 67. And this brings us to the final tally. There were 28 games in the PlayStation Plus monthly games, this was a decrease of 4 games or minus 12.5% compared to 2019, however if you consider Nathan Drake and Bioshock Collection as 3 separate games each, we had the same number of games as in 2019. For 2019 we were still getting PS3 and PS Vita games until March, while most of 2020 was PS4 only until PS5 was released in November. The total value of the monthly games for 2020 was 799 with 72, which represents 94 with 96 or 11% less than we had last year. Metacritic score also took a slight bump of 3% when you compare the average from last year which was 77.6 to 2020 only being 75.1. The best month in terms of value was February with 119 with 97, while the worst was January with only 29 with 98. Meanwhile, in terms of score average, the best month was April with an 89 and the worst was October with a 66. We already mentioned PlayStation Plus Collection total value was 504 with 80, and if you add that to the yearly rollout of games, you would have gotten a total value of 1200 with 84 and 53 cents. That is taking the total value of both the collection and all year games while subtracting 19 with 99 from Uncharted 4 as it appeared on both. Now granted, this is the maximum possible value if you got to redeem everything, which is probably not the case since you may have had a game already or maybe you missed one. But still, even with monthly games not surpassing last year in terms of score and total value, there were still highlights throughout the year, even if a few months didn't work out for you, and putting the PS5 collection on top of that, and it was a solid year for PlayStation Plus. But what do you think? How many games did you get to redeem and play from the service? And what were your favorites or the month you hated the most? Let me know in the comments below along with your feedback, and I'd appreciate if you like, dislike, or share this video with your friends. 
My name is Joseph, this is Hi for Games, wishing you a happy holidays and a wonderful 2021, and let's get hyped!